Hi everyone, thanks for the left turn for today, Saturday, October 15th, 2016. I'm George Ferrar and welcome back to the Jack's Left channel. Welcome back to History Jacksonville. I got a great episode of History Jacksonville that you're going to love. Uh, it's Jacksonville in the early 1970s. Uh, I was born here in Jacksonville in 1975. And, uh, uh, so I want to talk with you today about the Jacksonville uh, that was coming together that was rapidly growing in the years before I was born. Uh, I've lived most of my life here, uh, and uh, I have been fascinated, uh, as you know, by our history, and our politics, our government, and the different things that are going on here. So I'm going to be with you here today for a little bit to talk with you about how Jacksonville grew so rapidly. And uh, if you even take a look at the lower left-hand corner, you see I-95. Uh, the uh, northbound lanes. Okay, and now you see uh, towards the mid-1970s, we see the Independent Life Building constructed. Uh, the new Independent Life Building, because they had moved from their headquarters over on Julia Street to the new, uh, this great skyscraper. Uh, and of course, you see across the river, you see the uh, Golf Life Building, uh, what was called in Golf Life Building. Of course, we know, of course, the Independent Life Building is now the Wells Fargo Center. So we have to look at then, why is this guy smiling? Well, this was Mayor Hans Tanzler. He was a mayor during the uh, uh, late 60s, uh, 1970s. Uh, and uh, he was mayor amidst all of this growth. Uh, this time was in the early years of consolidation when Jacksonville and uh, Duval County had merged together. And so there were all these pressures, and he had challenges. And back then, you could go downtown and go to a Sears. You see the parking lots there. Uh, that building just off the right-hand corner is the Civic Auditorium. Uh, I remember uh, going to Sears uh, in around 1980. I was around, my, around 1979, 1980. I was a youngster. And I remember the palm trees. I remember the river and wanting to go by and look at the river as well. Uh, so uh, this was the Jacksonville Police Headquarters. At one point back pre-consolidation, of course, we had the Jacksonville Police Department for simply the Jacksonville, the city. Uh, but of course, in consolidation, uh, they uh, decided through uh, the vote uh, that we would then take the Jacksonville uh, Police Department, merge it with the Sheriff's Office, and have uh, one law enforcement agency for all of the Duval County, with the exceptions out the beaches of Baldwin. So uh, now we're looking at downtown. Uh, this is around the area of Main Street. Uh, and you see towards the right, you'll see where it says Hart Bridge. And it looks like there's a directional arrow, uh, one way. But look at the different one way signs. There's some interesting quirks here. The, uh, the street lamps, uh, I remember from my childhood. Um, I remember, uh, because they're kind of neat, umbrella, um, street lights. And then you'll see a shell station, a gas station. I mean, back then it was pretty amazing. I mean, uh, now you had to pay tolls, and back then there was no electronics. You literally, it was cash coin. Uh, and so, I mean, you dropped your coins. You were having a bad morning, right? Dump it in the basket, uh, you know, and trying to get through the toll booths. And, of course, the carbon monoxide. Oh, man, I remember in the 1980s, before they removed the toll booths, just all just, I was on a bus, you know, school buses. We were, um, you know, transported here, there, and everywhere for education back then. Regency Square Mall. Now, that was a focal point of retail uh, in the early 70s. And I remember growing up uh, later on in the late 70s, what a big place that was to shop. Uh, some amazing places. Uh, my mother really loved Regency Square. Um we would, uh, you know, hang out the Woolworths uh, lunch, uh, lunch cafeteria area. Uh, and, uh, you know, there was some glamour there, you know, to me. <laughs> Furchigets. I really enjoy Furchigets. Um, I would go uh, shopping, or my mother would go shopping, and I would be tagging along with her. And uh, they would have these um, live models that would be in the windows uh, that would be modeling the clothing. Uh, and they would be acting as mannequins and, you know, it, it, a special time, different time, a lot of ways. Things were a lot more, to me, it seemed like there was some hustle and bustle, but things were kind of laid back. It was kind of chill, you know. 
Okay, Phillips Mall. I remember Phillips Mall. Uh, you know, you see the J.M. Fields. Uh, you see the, the theater. Uh, had the Montgomery Ward. You know, I remember the Montgomery Ward. I remember kind of was in its final years. But uh, this was built in 1958. Cited because they knew about the I-95. If you look up towards the north, you see, look how narrow I-95 is. Look how leisurely and this kind of pastoral and quaint I-95. Ain't like that no more. Okay, so uh, Thunderbird uh, off the Arlington Expressway. Uh, and boy, I remember the Thunderbird sign. Uh, and, you know, it's big time kind of hotel type uh, convention center. Well, you know, what you might consider a, a conference space, conference facilities, I think, party room, ballroom type thing, dancing, that kind of stuff, music. Uh, uh, its own little venue off of Arlington Expressway. Pretty neat stuff. Uh, and then, for those of you out there, do you remember on I-95, the Red Carpet Inn? Uh, I was intrigued by the Red Carpet Inn uh, in the ni early 1980s. Um, I, uh, we would be you know, going out of downtown, down uh, southbound on I-95, and I would come across at night uh, the sign, you see that in the upper right-hand corner, uh, and you'll see a close-up in just a second of a, just an example. Uh, but red carpet in and be lit. If you see these bulbs, it would be really lit. It would be very, um, you would come across this sign, you go, wow. <laughs> I still remember it to this day. You know, lighting and darkness and travel. It really, those, that's when they kind of built hotels to kind of have that experience, right? Now, here's like further out, I think further out into, uh, away from the city out in the county, and you got Burger King, home of the Whopper. And it's different, you know, everything's kind of different. It's, you know, at this point, you know, you can go out into some areas of Duval County, even, and there's there's somewhat a rural nature. You know, um, even when I lived in Mandarin in the early 1980s, the Southside Saddle Club, okay, um, some cool times there, cool folks and family and everything. All right. Okay, so uh, rail station, um, the uh, Union Terminal. Uh, this was in the time when it, operations at the Union Terminal were about to be winded down. But there was going to be a big burst of something amazing happening in 1972. But uh, they moved uh, the rail operations out, uh, out of Union Terminal in 1974, January 3rd, 1974. And it had been uh, our uh, railway station uh, from 1919 to 1974. And then it went into an abandoned, dilapidated state until the mid, around the mid-1980s when the convention center, uh, and you'll see that this is before they did the renovation and pulled out and put out the building, uh, stretching out. So you see a unique, there's a unique picture. That's the picture I remember going down I-95, late 70s, early 1980s. Okay, Hunter S. Thompson, 1972. Visited Jacksonville in February 1972 for the presidential primary for the Democrats. And uh, <laughs> uh, he uh, uh, boarded a train at Union Terminal with a, as part of the press corps contingent that were following a whistle stop campaign through Florida by U.S. Senator Edmund Muskie of Maine. The nickname was Big Ed. Uh, he was your kind of your mainstream uh, kind of candidate, you know. Uh, he gave a really good speech in 1970, and it really catapulted attention for him to do his campaign. But things kind of, things didn't go too well in New Hampshire. People say he had uh, cried at a press conference he was holding about some allegations that had been made against his wife. Uh, but some say it was just melted uh, uh, snow on his face. But uh, so he was down to try to uh, shore up his campaign and win the Florida primary, uh, but unfortunately for him, uh, Florida, including Duval County, voted for George Wallace, uh, the governor of Alabama, and he had been a segregationist in the 1950s, 1960s, and later on uh, in the uh, 1970s, he became more anti-busing. He had a spiritual change later on, so that's where things stood. And I, I have an, another video, uh, you'll be seeing another episode of History Jacksonville. About, uh, about Hunter S. Thompson and Ed Muskie and that amazing train ride that started in Jacksonville. So stay tuned. Uh, Jacksonville Coliseum. 
the Jacksonville Coliseum built in 1960, demolished in 2003. I graduated from high school and the ceremony was in that very building. A lot of amazing uh, events uh, happening uh, happened there. Uh, concerts, uh, events like, uh, and for example, Elvis Presley performing uh, two concerts in April 1972. Sports events, uh, I remember uh, I actually uh, did a, um, uh, a benefit where I participated in a haunted house back there in Community College right there. It was at the fair, the uh, Greater Jacksonville Agricultural Fair. So, you know, all these different things, everybody in Jacksonville, you know, kind of comes together to have a common experience. And I was fascinated by, as a youngster, you know, going there for the circus and things like that. Uh, an amazing arena. Now let's take a drive down the Roosevelt Boulevard, past an A.S. Jacks, into Clay County. Briefly, uh, we'll talk Clay County history uh, here on History Jacksonville because of the impact of WAPE on uh, Jacksonville. A radio station on Fleming Island just past south of Orange Park on the left. I remember driving and riding uh, by there uh, in my childhood and my uh, teen years. Uh, and uh, amazing studio. They had a pool, as you can see there. Uh, and it's kind of cool with this hit list here. You have um, uh, the Osmonds. You got Don McLean, American Pie. In the top, uh, those are the top two songs there. Uh, you got Jackson 5. You got Zeppelin. This is back when music was music. And you had folk, bread, everything I own. That's an amazing folk song. I like, I like there's a little bit of that, you know, um, in this music. This is when music was, <laughs> this is music was music, man. This is the real deal here. This is real stuff. People speaking from the heart, singing from the heart. Uh, you know, there's some pop here, obviously, of course, but uh, but there's some good, good stuff. So, uh, you know, uh, radio, uh, amazing thing. Uh, you know, I was a big WAPE listener uh, in the mid-80s, you know. Uh, I do remember hearing The Grease Man. I do remember, of course, Hoyle Dempsey. Uh, so, <laughs> in the early 1970s, the independent life insurance company was looking to uh, expand. Uh, they were looking to uh, build a new headquarters. Uh, they had a headquarters uh, that they had built in the 1950s uh, at Julia and Duval Streets. Uh, so they finally settled upon uh, building a skyscraper uh, at the foot of the Main Street Bridge. Uh, there was a lot of parking lots. There were a lot of parking lots in the area at the time, so they uh, decided then to build a skyscraper, and this, of course, was the end result after it was uh, constructed. Looking uh, from across the river from Friendship Park, in 1974, not only Jacksonville was changing, but the United States of America was changing. President Richard Nixon was impeached and resigned due to the Watergate affair. Uh, he was replaced by. Vice President Gerald Ford, and uh, President Ford later pardoned Richard Nixon. Uh, so that was the world into which I was born in 1975. And here's a picture of Jacksonville in the year of my birth. And uh, you can take a look uh, and you can see the different bridges, Main Street Bridge, the Hart Bridge, uh, City Hall, all the parking lots, the landing hadn't been constructed. Uh, of course, you see the independent life. Remember Atlantic Bank? Over on the South Bank, you see the Gulf Tower. You see I-95 snaking off to the south. And uh, so here we are uh, getting towards the uh, end of another episode of History Jacksonville. And I've had the time today to communicate to you uh, through our history, uh, through pictures uh, about uh, the Jacksonville of the early 1970s, which ultimately uh, was the world in which I was born, to which I grew up in the early uh, late 1970s, early 1980s. Um, in 2011, you see me here uh, at Occupy Jacksonville. Uh, so um, it, it's always a good idea for us to look back uh, to see where we've come from to get an idea of where we can go towards uh, and uh, I want to thank you uh, for your continued 
viewership here on History Jacksonville. I have a lot planned in the upcoming uh, season of History Jacksonville. Uh, I'm going to be going downtown. I'm going to be looking at Ortega. I'll be looking at San Marco. I'll be um, bringing you George's 103rd Street. Uh, I'm going to be looking at Mandarin next year. There's a, a lot going on. And I want to thank you for watching. Take it easy. See you later. Thank you.